Hi everyone, this is Pastor Tim coming to you from um, my office on the campus at Grace. Thanks for joining us today. What I'd like to do is uh, open with prayer, if I could. So uh, would you pray together with me right now? Father in heaven, uh, during this unusual time in history, during this time where there is uh, loss and uncertainty and, uh, and concern, Lord, we pray that your spirit would be uh, working in us. Father, uh, help us to come alongside one another to grieve what should be grieved, to lament what is appropriate to lament, and God, in all of it, we pray that uh, in our lament, you would move us toward real hope. Father, today I pray that you'd speak through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I said, I'm glad that you've joined me today. It was just last evening that my wife, Anne, finished a 1,000-piece jigsaw puzzle. The puzzle is of a beautiful lake scene probably along the shore of one of the Great Lakes. And it really is a beautiful picture. And we've decided that we're going to keep that completed picture on our kitchen table through this week. Um, in part, we're gonna keep that picture on the table because it's a reminder to me of the value of perseverance. I can assure you that uh, I did not help with one piece of that puzzle. When it comes to uh, puzzles, I'm really, uh, I'm better equipped to deal with puzzles of 20 pieces or less, those I can handle and manage. But Anne tackled this 1,000 piece puzzle and she stayed at it and she persevered and in her aim, was to finish what she started. She said there were times when she really wondered, should I just take the pieces that I have assembled and just push them back into the box? But she persevered and kept going. And I really respect and admire her for that. So I want that puzzle on our kitchen table through this week as a reminder of not only the beauty of this uh, Great Lakes scene, but as a reminder of the kind of perseverance it took to complete the puzzle. When I think of that kind of intentionality, when I think of that kind of uh, deliberate aim to finish what, what was started, I can't help but think of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, earlier in his public ministry, before he reached uh, that week that was the crescendo of his life in public ministry, Jesus had earlier been very resolute and resolved about seeing through his missions to the end. In fact, in Luke 9.51, we read this, when the days drew near for him, Jesus, to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. In other words, Jesus knew that uh, as he moved through this redemptive mission that he'd been given by God the Father and that he had joyfully and lovingly agreed to, Jesus knew that there would be a time when he would be taken up, when he would ascend back into heaven. He had left all the privilege of heaven when he came to Bethlehem. He knew that there was coming a day when he would ascend back into heaven. But in the midst of his earthly life and public ministry, he knew that his mission would lead him to that final week of his life, which would involve scorn, and ridicule and suffering, unimaginable suffering on our behalf. 
So here it is again in verse 51. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. That expression, set his face, is uh, that's an expression of intentionality, isn't it? In fact, it was that uh, a, a similar expression in Isaiah 50, verse 7, where it says uh, prophetically of the one who would be the Messiah that he set his face like flint. He was intentional and deliberate about seeing through to the end the mission that was his before God the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, that aspect of the life and ministry of Jesus is significant to me. As we follow him, we follow a Savior who is very intentional and very deliberate in all that he did on our behalf. And so it's uh, interesting as we come to this Holy Week that, uh, that we're reminded of a story that took place on Tuesday of Holy Week. It was a parable that Jesus told. He was speaking directly to uh, a group of religious leaders who were Pharisees. They had begun to question his authority and their scorn was escalating and their opposition to Jesus and their desire to rid themselves of him was only rising. And as his authority was being questioned, Jesus, humbly and courageously, shared three stories with the Pharisees. Stories that were aimed at uh, helping them to see where they really stood before God. And in one of those stories, it's a parable about two sons. And, and this is what we read beginning at, uh, beginning at Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 28. Matthew 21, beginning at verse 28, the parable of the two sons. And Jesus said, what do you think? A man had two sons. And he went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyards today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. And to that, they answered correctly. There were two sons in this story that Jesus told. One was kind of a pain at breakfast, but he was a delight at dinner. The other, was a delight at breakfast, but a disappointment at dinner. One of them uh, had professed to uh, want to eagerly obey, but he never followed through. He didn't finish well. The other was obstinate at first, um, unwilling, resistant, but some place along the way there was a readiness to submit and to say, yes, I'll go, I will obey. Jesus in that parable is uh, really underscoring for us the value of obedience. But Jesus is doing something more. He's saying it's not just how you start, it's how you finish. Are you going to be a, a, a man or a woman before God who's resolved to finish well? I'm now in my uh, early 60s. I no longer uh, measure my life from the beginning. 
I measure my life from the end. And one of the longings of my heart is to forget all that's behind, to be resolute about looking forward and ahead, seeing Jesus at the finish line to welcome me. And I want to finish well. I want to finish well. Uh, but perhaps that whole theme of uh, finishing well is why that jigsaw puzzle that Anne completed is meaningful to me. She saw it through to the end. She finished what she started. Jesus himself was like that. He set his face toward Jerusalem. He set his face like flint. He was aware of all that the Father was calling him to accomplish. That's why on the cross on Friday, Jesus could say, it is finished. It is accomplished. Those of us who follow him, we've been assigned to him a stewardship. A stewardship to partner with him in his ongoing mission. And during a time like this, where there is so much uncertainty in the world and so much heaviness and, uh, and so much loss, loss of lives, loss of loved ones, loss of financial savings and all kinds of loss during this win window of time. And yet, in the midst of all this, we've been given by the Lord Jesus a mission. A mission to stay the course and to continue. It's interesting in this parable that Jesus told, Jesus said to them, after they had uh, rightly said that the son who did what the father wanted was the one who had obeyed, who at the end of the day was doing the work of the father. Jesus said to them, truly, I say to you, he's speaking now to religious leaders. Truly, I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you for John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even when you saw it, you did not afterwards change your minds and believe him. Jesus references here the ministry of John the Baptist, and what was, what was the primary theme of John's ministry? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Turn. Turn from whatever is hijacking your attention on God and all that he is for you in Jesus. Turn from that and turn toward him and follow him, this Savior who went to the cross in our behalf. My prayer for myself and for us on this Tuesday of Holy Week is that we give some attention to this story that Jesus told about two brothers, one who was a pain at breakfast, but who was a joy at the end of the day, and one who started well at breakfast, but who was a disappointment at the end of the day. And the issue is, how are we going to finish? How are we going to finish as we follow this Savior, Jesus, who from the cross completed his mission and could say in all of his pain and suffering before the Father and to a watching world, it is finished. So, Grace Church, pray for me that I would finish well. And after this devotional, I'm going to go into the auditorium on our campus at Grace. And I'm going to pray specifically 
that God will so work in all of you watching this devotional that you would have new resolve to finish well, that you would follow it to the end, that you would live with great hope. It says of the Lord Jesus in Hebrews 12, 2, that for the joy set before him, that joy that was coming one day on the other side, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let me pray for us right now that God would do something in us today where he would uh, energize our readiness to persevere, to follow him through the storm, to not be put off by the heaviness of all that's going on, that we'd fix our eyes on Jesus, the one who said, it is finished, and that we in our lives, in our partnership in his mission, that we'd finish well. Father in heaven, I pray right now that you'd minister to those who are watching. Father, I pray that you would be shaping in us new measures of readiness to persevere, to trust you through the storm. And God, I pray that um, there would be new measures of fruitfulness, that um, would issue forth from our lives. As we follow you today and every day, till we breathe our last, in Jesus' name, amen. Blessings on you, Grace Church. I hope you have a great day. I hope you can be with us on Friday night for our streaming Good Friday service and this Sunday morning for our streaming celebration of the resurrection of Jesus.